name is Mary Olson, and I do work for Nuclear Information and Resource Service. We're local business cards out there, but nirs.org is where you can find a lot of what I'll be saying tonight if you want to look it back up. I was sitting there thinking about the fact that it's been 1981 since I was in this state. I was driving my 1964 Plymouth Valiant from where I went to college in Portland, Oregon, back home to my parents in Indiana, and followed the Snake River. And I, I have images from that trip. It was a, a special time when you're that age. And I always tag the fact that I'm really happy that younger people are here. I'm glad the moms are here. I'm glad the babies are here. People who grew up in the Cold War are going to go, duh, to a lot of things I'm going to say tonight. But I spend a lot of time working with people who are half my age, and many of them have never, ever, ever heard that radiation causes cancer. The nuclear industry has done the opposite of product placement. They have removed radiation information from our popular media. So I'm going to be talking about radiation impacts tonight. But I want to start with our sunflower, because not only is it the symbol internationally of nuclear abolition, I always say, if you think solar power doesn't work, go talk to your sunflowers. <laughs> next. OK, next means next slide. And I'm not going to say slide. You're just going to have to catch that next. OK, I promise you're not going to get a lot of words. I mean, mostly brought you pictures. But I want you to know that what I'm going to talk about tonight is not controversial. It is totally mainstream. As a matter of fact, I'm not even going to be introducing independent, more challenging scientific work. I'm only talking about stuff that is mainstream and codified in our government's own numbers. So to that extent, EPA explicitly says what I'm going to say in the Safe Drinking Water Standards. Nuclear Regulatory Commission embodies the, these perspectives in Part 20 and the as low as re reasonably achievable Part 50. The National Academy of Sciences I'm going to talk a lot about, but most important, if you go into the data, it's all supported. Next. Okay, here's a picture. Um, Lisa shared with us about those energetic particles. So they make a lot of heat inside a reactor. But they also have a lot of energy traveling around in our environment. And I need to tag the fact that I'm talking about all radiation. This applies to quote unquote naturally occurring radiation. It applies to radio radiation radioactivity from making nuclear weapons, from making nuclear energy, from medical applications, from research. There is no separation. It is all the same issues. A radioactive element has a nucleus that is going towards stable, and in that process, it is releasing energy. When we do that in the context of a weapon, we're using that energy to make a massive fireball. When we do it in the context of a reactor, we're using that energy to heat and boil that water that Lisa was telling us about. But when it happens to our bodies, that energy has got a terminal velocity, and it can actually damage the cell. So here's the picture of the radioactive particles coming out, hitting the cell. And again, it doesn't damage our body in terms of cutting off an arm or a leg or a head. It impacts our cells. And most specifically, it impacts the DNA in our cells. Although not only that. This picture shows you how the DNA is broken and how a cell can then be sitting there and over time form a cancer. Now, before I go on, I want to tell you, this is not the only story. Like Diana, like Joanna told us, there are multiple stories. Having this information is so important to be able to protect ourselves, to be able to stand together and protect each other. But I want to remind you that our cells also have naturally already in them the ability to repair this damage. So not every radiation exposure results in cancer. Then there's other pictures where there's so much radiation impact it actually kills a cell. Most of the time, that's OK. Our body can just absorb that dead cell, make a new one, move on. So this is why radiation impacts are, for the most part, unknown and unknowable for some time. Next. 
But the most usual outcome that we talk about is cancer. I want to remind us that cancer is not the only outcome, however. There's cancer, there's death from cancer. There can be loss of an embryo. There can be loss of a fetus, which would be spontaneous abortion or miscarriage. We can have lowered fertility in both men and women. We can have lowered immune function in men, women, children, elders, everybody. And that can lead to increased other diseases in populations that are affected by radiation, including increased heart disease. And then one of the things that we know the least about, but we do know is quite the case, which is the heritability of some of these events. That, in fact, some events don't even show up at all for two and three generations, according to animal studies. So just for a moment, if we're going to focus on cancer, because that's what our government talks about, that seems to be the only outcome they care about. I'm going to come back to this slide later, but do we care about one in a million people getting cancer? How about one in a hundred thousand? These are from industrial activities here. These are from socially permitted activities. One in 10,000? How about one in 286? Well, I all sound kind of okay because cancer is raging in our society, right? We all know that cancer is running at a lot higher rate than this. Next. This slide just repeats Lisa's view that all of the steps in the nuclear fuel chain results in radiation exposures. Next. And this slide is a picture of the fact that a single facility, the Chernobyl reactor, can lead to enormous consequences. This is a picture of the cesium deposits from a single reactor in 1986 exploding and burning for 10 days. Now, we're going to have a little fun because we're going to animate together. So next slide, and I'm going to talk about this for a second, and then we're going to go fast for a few. Okay, so over, this is a schematic drawing. This is from OECD, by the way, which is one of those big international official organizations. This was reconstruction of the Chernobyl plume that happened after, much later. So this is a schematic drawing of Europe. You can see it's Scandinavia at the top and Spain over here and uh, the Mediterranean Sea down at the bottom. Italy's down in there, okay? And you see that little black, dark, dark, dark area far over there? Watch that point. That's day one. That's April 26, 1986. Okay, next. Next, yeah, did it. Okay, back, there. Okay. That was actually a little fast. Let's do it again. <laughs> okay, this point backwards. Yeah, yeah, it never happened. All right. I like going backwards. Okay. All right. Again. Yeah. Again. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So this is a map of the immediate area. That's where the one unit blew up. There's actually three more units at that site, which are finally offline, but they got operated for a long time after the accident, and people had to go into the zone to work. It was really awful. But this is only one third of the radioactivity in Belarus and Ukraine. Terribly concentrated, most of those areas evacuated, but not all. There's people living in very contaminated zones. Um, next. And this again is where the other two-thirds went. Two-thirds of the discharge was not local. And some of that is thousands of miles from the site, including in Scotland, where they just recently started using the milk and meat from lands that had been interdicted. Next. OK, the French government is really good at figuring out about radioactivity because they have so many reactors. And this was their reconstruction that just recently came out of the cesium impact of Chernobyl. Someday we will have this from Fukushima, but today we do not. Today we do not have the data compiled to make a map like this. Next. Okay, bad picture, but I want you to see, thank you. I want you to see what happens to the liquidators, the workers at Fukushima, some medical misadministrations. This is a radiation burn. Enough intensely concentrated radiation can actually burn you. And if your whole body gets this, you get 